What's going on everybody, C4 here. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much for clicking on today's video. And what I want to do after the completion of Championship Saturday for college football, we're getting ready for bowl week, which is awesome. You know, you got, obviously it's not even just week. You got, you know, New Year's Day, you got all the other bowls mixed in, you got the championship. It's awesome. It's one of the best times to watch football because you get a lot of these kids. It's the last time they're ever going to play, so it's all or nothing. It's, it's some of the best football that you can watch, and I implore you, if you do like watching these videos for the draft, but don't really watch college football, tune in for that stuff, man. And, and I would love to hit a thousand likes on today's video. Gotta keep my voice low, I'm watching the baby today. Just gotta sleep. So hopefully we have enough time, because I'm doing something a little bit different here today. We're gonna be doing a two-round mock draft. So maybe for each individual pick, I'll have a little less defending the selection, just so that we can get through this in a reasonable manner. But I felt like, well, why not? Let's do two rounds. Let's kind of see if I can start to complete some of the holes on these teams that I might not be able to do in just one round. So without further ado, let's go, baby. First overall pick. It's pretty much been set and forget. Cave on Thibodeau to Oregon. But I'm going to pull an audible here. And we're going to go Aiden Hutchinson out of Michigan. Seems more like a Dan Campbell guy. I don't really know. I think they're kind of similar and close for a scheme fit. Some could argue Kayvon Thibodeau could be a slightly better scheme fit for the Lions. But you look at Hutchinson, I think the production this year, he's the most important player on Michigan, most important player for Michigan, making the college football playoff. 15 tackles for loss, 13 sacks. He's number two on Bruce Feldman's freak list. And I will be highlighting that for a couple players. Essentially, I mean, it's on the athletic. He does it every single year. Just when I when I drop that, just know this player is most likely going to have a very good, if not ridiculous, combine. And I think once Hutchinson gets through the combine, gets through all those workouts, I just feel like that's the guy Dan Campbell's going to pull the trigger on and be the number one edge rusher for the Detroit Lions. And you know who's happy with the selection? The Jacksonville Jaguars, because they pick number two. They're going to get Kayvon Thibodeau to come in and play on the other side of Josh Allen, which is pretty scary. Thibodeau this year, 12 TFLs, seven sacks, elite athlete. You could argue maybe a higher ceiling than Aiden Hutchinson. But either way, the Jacksonville Jaguars just, you know, they probably didn't think they'd be picking at pick two a year after getting Trevor Lawrence, but here we are, and at least you're getting another can't-miss blue-chip player in Kayvon Thibodeau. Pick three, the Houston Texans. Here's where I've been, like, kind of going quarterback, but I've, I'm going to act like this is a mock draft that if I was the team, who would I be picking at this spot if I was the team? Trust me, once we get to the Eagles, you'll know. Uh, and I think if I'm the Texans here, and there's reports Justin Reed had some disciplinary issues, you would figure he's one of the more... Um, upsidey guys on the roster at safety maybe the end's there I, I think at this point you go blue chip you go can't miss play because i don't think a quarterback at three is going to complete that texan cerebral so i've been getting kyle hamilton who's number three on bruce feldman's freak list at 6 4 200 pounds can cover can play the run 34 tackles three picks four pass breakups in seven games this year he is a complete safety should be the highest traditional safety drafted since sean taylor and that is again just just Go, go with the safe pick. Go with the can't miss. Go with the best players. You start stacking them up, and eventually you'll get back to where you want to be. I don't think Texans, especially with whatever the hell's going on with Sean Watson, you're going to fix their issues by reaching for a quarterback at three. Four and five belong to the Jets, so let's go at pick four. And this is insane. I want to see this happen. It's about as hype as you can get for an offensive line. I want them to get Evan Neal, who's essentially Mekhi Becton 2.0. And you have Mekhi Becton. You have AVT there. Like, you bring in Evan Neal, that's a, that's a Joe Douglas pick. And when you look at Zach Wilson, what made Zach Wilson so good at BYU is that he had one of the got top five offensive line at BYU. Now you got to slowly start building that in the next level. You need to start building the Jets' offensive line into a power. So having Mekhi Becton at left tackle, AVT at guard, Evan Neal at right tackle, you got to figure out, obviously, center in the other guard spot. But that is outstanding going for it for the next five years that should be one of the better offensive lines in the AFC and Evan Neal can't miss player number one on Bruce Feldman's freak list he should be able to at six I think he's six seven two fifty two sixty and he's most likely going to be one of the most athletic tackles not even most likely I'd be shocked if he's not a top three athletic tackle from the combine workouts which is absurd because he's a gigantic human being uh number five back to back for the Jets I think just keep it simple Let's go another blue chip player. Now his blue chip status has come into some sort of question here because Stingley hasn't really had the production. He's had some injury issues and stuff like that. Eight tackles, three and a half TFLs, and a forced fumble this year in only three games. But he's number nine on the freaks list. He's 6'2", 200 pounds, runs a 4'3", 42-inch vert, S-tier athlete. I, I just think once the combine comes through, people are going to be like, oh, yeah, well, you know, 
Let's just kind of look at the good Derek Stingley tape. His freshman season, where he had six interceptions and 15 pass breakups. That's when he was last healthy. That's when he was last on a competent defense. And I think after all the workouts, Stingley will firmly entrench himself as a top five pick. And when you're the Jets, need to get better at that secondary. Haven't had a lockdown corner since Darrell Revis. And I'm not going to you know start with that comp, start with that ceiling of Stingley has to be the next Revis there. But in terms of talent, in terms of upside, he might have a chance. Six and seven, staying in New York, double up again. At number six for the New York Giants, I'm going to have them get George Kalaftis from Purdue. Now, this is more so a projection. Ten TFLs, four and a half sacks. He's been one of those guys that hasn't always been a sack monster, but he is much better than his stat. He's on Purdue. He's the guy, like, obviously, if you're playing Purdue, you're like, oh, they have one freak. Let's double team him. Let's triple team him. He's number seven on the Bruce Feldman freak list, so he should have a very good combine. Very powerful player. I think he has some versatility there for that Giants team. I think ultimately, just for this pick, the Giants need to get more sacks. They need to apply more pressure and going with the great consolation prize after Kayvon Thibodeau and Aiden Hutchinson. Galaftis is very, very solid. And that's a, that's a nice Dave Gettleman pick. And if I to go with another Dave Gettleman pick, this is actually one of the more popular picks. I do a little bit of research before these mock drafts, just seeing kind of what the fan bases are thinking. And I'm going to have them get Linderbaum at seven. I've already seen a bunch of Giants fans be like, he's probably the best player we could get. Obviously, center as a top 10 pick is slightly niche. Probably not for Dave Gettleman, though. And I think Linderbaum, I mean, when you look at him, man, he's number 10 on the Freaks list, so he should test very, very well at the Combine. PFF, Big Ten Player of the Year offensively. He is the highest graded center in PFF history. I'm not quite ready to say we have another uh, Quentin Nelson on our hands where you just say screw positional versatility. He is, you know, and value in the draft. He is, you know, you got to go get Quentin Nelson, even though he's a guard. I'm not quite there with Linderbaum, but I think there's they're, they're in the same area code of like, center or not, he is an anchor that is going to be an anchor for the next 15 years on your offensive line. That is how good he is. There's some slight size concerns, but I think ultimately this is a pick for the Giants with a disgusting offensive line, get the best lineman available at pick seven, and I think that could very well be Linderbaum. I think I mean, there's other options, Kenyon Green, Iki Ekwanu, you can make Charles Cross potentially at seven. I just think go with literally the greatest center in college during the PFF era. Number eight, we have the Atlanta Falcons. For the Falcons, this is where I'm going to go kind of against the green as well. I think when all is said and done at the combine, Traylon Burks is going to be almost undisputed wide receiver one. Six foot three, 225 pounds. The combine is going to be the decider here. He's not built like these guys. He's kind of like Drake London, but Drake London has the injury. So I don't really think they're going to be in competition. And Burks looks so fast and slow at the same time that it's going to be one of those things that will be eye-opening at the Combine. Like, if he ran a 4-6 at the Combine, I wouldn't be surprised. If he ran a 4-4 at the Combine, I also kind of wouldn't be surprised. It's really, really difficult to tell uh, just, you know, the caliber of athlete he is because film is very deceptive. Uh, 67 catches, 1,100 yards, 11 touchdowns. And there's some people, some sites, like I you type in Traylon Burks 40, there's some sites that say he can run in the 4-3s. Now, that's what I'm saying. Some sites have said that. I don't know how much that is. But if he runs sub 4-5, I think he is a lock for wide receiver one. And let's, let's continue to rebuild this offense here. We don't really know what's going on with Calvin Ridley. Hopefully he comes back. You still need another playmaker. Calvin Ridley, Traylon Burks, Kyle Pitts going forward. You got goddamn freaking Cordero Patterson, who's an offensive weapon. Should make the Pro Bowl this year. Like that's that's pretty good for the Falcons going forward. I mean, they're hanging in there this year. You're seeing enough out of the Falcons this year that like you could still be winning around Matt Ryan. Let's continue to give him weapons, and Burks could be that guy. Nine for the Carolina Panthers. We're gonna have our first quarterback come off the board, and it is gonna be Kenny Two Gloves, Heisman finalist, Kenny Pickett. 4,300 passing yards, responsible 47 touchdowns this year. Really, I mean, you know, I it's going to be between him and Coral for me for quarterback one. I just think when you look at Kenny Pickett, I think he might just have slightly more pro readiness to his game. Like, really, the only knock, I mean, he's athletic. We saw the fake, the fake slide, very polarizing play. But you're seeing NFL arm, you're seeing NFL accuracy, you're seeing NFL decision-making, you're seeing NFL athleticism. The, the, the knock on him is his hand size. He's got. He, I think people are saying he might set the record for the smallest hands for a quarterback. That's why he wears Kenny Two Gloves. He wears gloves to help out with holding on to the football. So I kind of feel like that, honestly, as silly as it sounds, might mitigate that big red flag that Kenny Pickett has. He knows how to work with the gloves. It's kind of a marketing. It can kind of be like the Uni Brown thing for Anthony Davis. It's his gloves. And I think when you look at the Carolina Panthers, aside from the fact they just fired Joe Brady for some ridiculous reason... 
I, I love this fit. I think someone like Kenny Pickett can make the Carolina Panthers competitive right away next year, and they're a roster that doesn't really need to be entering into a rebuild. Number 10, Minnesota Vikings. I'm going to have them address the secondary. Now, I don't think Zimmer's still going to be there, so you might have a little bit of a drop-off in terms of coaching up DBs, but I think Andrew Booth Jr. should be the second corner taken out to Derek Stingley, and I say that as a Gator fan. Uh, Andrew Booth, uh, 35 tackles, a pick, five pass breakups. Really similar from, like, you look at play styles to Jeff Okuda coming out, not the Jeff Okuda we've seen for the Lions that can't stay healthy and stuff. In, in terms of skill set, very good footwork. I think Andrew Booth is underrated. Anytime I watch Clemson play, he is making tackles in the run game. He is making plays downfield. He is shutting down wide receiver ones. And I, I'm, I'm interested to see. I can't get a true read of how good of an athlete. I can't say he's going to be 4-3, 4-4, somewhere in that range. But I do think that like that's it's going to be a big combine for every single corner this year. I think that that's going to be the decider because I, I do think there's a log jam. I mean, Stingley, yes, should be one. But between Booth, Kyrie Elam, Sauce Gardner, I think to a degree, Roger McCreary as well. Um, those guys are all going to be in contention for like, you know, between that 10 and 15 range, who's going to be that next corner that comes off the board? And right now I'm going with Andrew Booth in either way. The Minnesota Vikings, I think going corner is going to be their top priority here at pick 10. Number 11, we have the New Orleans Saints, and I'm going to have them grab a quarterback. They're going to get Matt Corral from Ole Miss. I feel like Matt Corral going from Lane Kiffin to Sean Payton is the kind of equal chamber that he needs to continue his development. Another pro rowdy quarterback I think will be able to get thrown to the Wolves right away as a starter for the Saints. Hopefully Michael Thomas returns, and you're going to have a healthy Alvin Kamara. That is a fun offense with Matt Corral, and I want to see that happen personally. And I think it's time, and time is now. You don't go back with James Winston. You go pick 11. Let's be honest, man. The Saints haven't really been smashing their first-round picks. They've been kind of eh, iffy. So I think taking the risk with Matt Corral also kind of works. It's not like, you know, oh, we didn't pick Matt Corral. You know we're getting a blue chip, can't miss player. Ha you know, been a little bit dodgy last couple of drafts. Why not get your final true Drew Brees successor? Now we have two picks for the Philadelphia Eagles at 12 and 13. Of course, that's how this would work with the Eagles. We'd go from having three top 10 picks to now not being able to get any blue chip players is what it is. So at pick 12, again, this is what I would do. I'm going to have the Philadelphia Eagles go down here and select N'Kobe Dean, the linebacker from Georgia. Six feet tall, 225 pounds. He is an absolute monster. Elite, elite cover linebacker and run defender. 61 tackles, 8.5 TFLs, 5 sacks, 2 picks. I will say right now, that I can, you can always make the argument that the combine between Kobe Dean and Devin Lloyd here out of Utah, like that's gonna what's gonna decide who's linebacker one, who's linebacker two. Nicobe Dean comes out, runs four five, high four fives, and you have a Devin Lloyd coming in over, runs four four, and, and, and shows shows out in like the vertical and explosion drills. That you know, I, I think which one of these guys ends up being the better athlete is going to get drafted first because that is from a production standpoint, from what you've seen on tape in college between Dean and Lloyd, it is razor thin. And right now I'm going to slightly go with N'Kobe Dean because he's a little bit smaller, six feet tall, 225 pounds. I'm going to project that that's going to be a little bit more standout-ish during the combine versus Lloyd, who's like 6'2", 230, 235, somewhere in that range. But I mean, we already know Philly doesn't. Philly's not going to draft a linebacker here, but we need it. You'll get all the best teams in the NFL. You'll get all the competitive teams in the NFL. They almost all have one very good linebacker, right? You look at what they're doing. Some of them have two. The Bucs have two linebackers. You look at the Colts right now. They got Darius Leonard. You look at Patriots. They got Hightower. You look literally at every single first place team to a degree. They have a very good linebacker. If not, they've shown importance. On the, look at the Cardinals, number one seed in the NFL. They got how many linebackers you got the last two years? Top picks. Isaiah Simmons, Zayvon Collins. It might not be hits all the way, but they're showing importance and valuing that linebacker position. And it's about time Philadelphia does the same. Pick 13 for the Eagles. This is a pick that I'm not in love with, honestly. But I, I think we might have to do it. And that is getting Sauce Gardner out of Cincinnati. Hasn't given up a touchdown in his college career. Three, 35 tackles, three sacks, three picks, four PBUs. Uh, last season, elite size, 6'2", 200 pounds for a corner. Combine's going to be interesting. Don't know how fast he should be 4'5", under for sure. Like I'm thinking something like high 4'4". High four fours. Good surprise in that department. And I, and I do like him as a prospect. I just don't know if I like him as the 13th player off the board, but when you look for the Philadelphia Eagles, we need to find someone that can play on the other side of Darius Slay. That's not, I mean, Steven Nelson's solid, but I mean, at this point, I don't think having Steven Nelson's going to, I mean, he's only in a one-year deal too, you have to give him a new contract, but I don't think Steven Nelson is enough to pass up on a guy that could be a potential long-term lockdown corner. And like, looking at the board here, I mean, Philly could be all over a DeMarvin Leal to come in and maybe replace Fletcher Cox if their plan is to move on from Fletcher Cox. 
They could go O-line because that's just a Howie Roseman thing to do. You could go pass rusher, potentially. They could grab a quarterback. You could grab a wide receiver, I think. You got to move on from Jalen Rager. You cut Jalen Rager. You know, you still need that other wide receiver to play with Devontae Smith and Quez Watkins. But I think at this point, we got to show a lot of love to the defense, and we'll grab Sauce Gardner there. 14 for the Denver Broncos. I'm actually going to go kind of against the grain. I bet you probably think I was going to pick a quarterback. But here, I think, first of all, please. Please, Denver. Please get Aaron Rodgers. Because we're going to get Iki Aquanu who who come and play right tackle. You're going to finish out this offensive line. You got Bulls. You got Dalton Risner. You got Quinn Minerts. You got Iki Aquanu. You got Javante Williams. You got Cortland Sutton. You got Jerry Judy. You got KJ Hamler. You got Noah Fant. You got Alberto. Like, there is so many fun pieces on the offense. You just need a quarterback. And you know what? Just, just get Aaron Rodgers. Hey, maybe not even keep this pick 14. This should be a Packers pick because you should get Aaron Rodgers. But Iki Aquanu, one of the best run blockers, perfect fit to come in to just continue to elevate the game of Javante Williams, who's an absolute stud, and finish out that offensive line and protect Aaron freaking Rodgers. Pick five, we have uh, 15, sorry, we have the Raiders. Or again, kind of a let's just move on type pick. I'm going to get Jameson Williams. Jameson Williams, godlike for Alabama this year. Pretty much looked like Henry Ruggs. Why not just get him to replace Henry Ruggs? 4 2 speed, best deep threat. In college, it's clearly an element that they want for their offense that, unfortunately, for powers out of their control, they don't have that anymore. So let's just quickly kind of move past it, get Jamison Williams, you get that deep threat back to your offense, and you move on. That's it. Point blank period. 16, we have the Cleveland Browns. And I'm going to have the Browns grab a guy that's also in consideration for wide receiver one in this draft. That's Garrett Wilson out of Ohio State. Uh, Garrett Wilson, okay, for Jamison Williams as well, deep threat, best deep threat, 1,400 yards, 15 touchdowns. So really productive. And then you look at Garrett Wilson at pick 16, 70 catches, 1,000 yards, 12 touchdowns. He has elite body control and route running. And for the Cleveland Browns, get your guy that can be that big-time playmaker that Odell Beckham Jr. failed to do. I mean, it's going to be a big thing here for the Browns where, you know, there's some assumptions made with this pick. I, my last mock draft, I went with the Browns moving from Baker Mayfield. They got Sam Howell here. This mock draft, under the assumption, like, maybe they'll keep it. Like, it is 50-50, I think. Whether or not they're going to extend Baker Mayfield. So I kind of went with that thinking for this mock. And if you are keeping Baker Mayfield, you got to get him that weapon. Got to get him that guy who can consistently make plays on the outside. And I think that could be Garrett Wilson. Pick 17 for the Philadelphia Eagles. I'm going to have them kind of finish this out. Just sticking with defense and getting David Ojabo, edge rusher from Michigan. Breakout player, 35 tackles, 12 TFLs, 11 sacks, an elite athlete. Didn't make Feldman's freaks list, but you look at any scouting report, you look at Dane Brugler on The Athletic as well, says he would be a lock to make the freaks list if he returned to Michigan for the 2022 season. Um, I think they're saying 4-5 in the 40 and stuff like that. He's 6 6'3", 6'4", 255, so great size, for traditional size for the position. Really, the knock on him right now is like how much of his production came because he had Aiden Hutchinson on the other side of the field, which is completely valid. But I think when you're the Philadelphia Eagles right now, you're missing out on some of the blue chip edge rushers. That's fine. But you look, you got Josh Sweat going forward. You have Brandon Graham coming back off a bad injury. You have Derek Burnett's going to be moving on. Like We need edge help. We desperately are going to need an edge help. If you're not thinking about it, think about it. It is a spot that we need. And someone like a job I think is well worth the pick at 17 because of his upside to develop into a pass rusher. Because you watch the Eagles right now, the biggest knock, I think, around the defense. Our secondaries are playing underrated. Very good. Darius Slay has been outstanding this year. It's, we're not getting enough pressure. We're not getting enough sacks. And Ojabo hopefully could remedy that. Pick 18, we have the Pittsburgh Steelers. And I'm going to have them grab a quarterback. They're going to get Sam Howell. Quarterback from North Carolina to come in. I mean, so many Steeler fans want Kenny Pickett. That could very well happen as well. But I think either way, between Pickett or Howell, both those guys are fits. Both those guys, I mean, Howell is the last of the quarterbacks, I think, truly, that could play sooner than later in their rookie season. And that's what you need with the Steelers. Steelers don't need a full-on, 100% long, four- or five-year rebuild. They need to get someone like Howell, throw him right into the Wolves as a starter, Hopefully continue to improve that offensive line. Howell helps. His mobility helps behind a weaker offensive line. But I think Howell is a guy that, as a rookie, can come in day one, start for the Steelers, and keep them competitive next season. Pick 19, we have the Miami Dolphins. And I'm going to have the Dolphins here. Again, kind of an easy pick. Home run pick. Kenyon Green. Guard, tackle. Either one of those spots, he is an upgrade. He, he's just one of those things like, yes. Is Kenyon Green playing on the line? Yes. Find the weakest spot. Plug him in. 
and can protect Tua and get some sort of a run game, which will come back for the second pick here for the Dolphins. But Kenyon Green, I think they they have to at this point. If I was him, best lineman available, which is easily Kenyon Green. 20, we have football team. And for the football team, I'm going to have them go into the secondary here. It's kind of a little bit of a slide, but the minimal slide. But Kyrie Elam from Florida. I am a Gators fan. He is very good. He, production might not be there. 27 tackles a pick, five PBUs, but he's a prototypical outside corner. Six foot two, 200 pounds, will run great, great man cover guy. And when you look at football team, you could argue that they have some, some slots, you know, fuller in the slot. But who do they got making big time plays on the outside in the secondary? It's, they're still looking for that guy. They're still looking for their guy that's going to be their lockdown. They're still looking for the guy that they thought Josh Norman was going to be when they paid him that big money a couple years ago. I think Kyrie Elam goes, and I mean, this is almost a credit to football team. They don't have a lot of holes. Like, this is where, like, quarterback, is there any of these quarterbacks right now at pick 20? That's like, yes, get that guy over Heineke. No. So then you just kind of default to, like, BPA. They could go wide receiver, bring in an Olave. You know, they could go somewhere on the offensive line, maybe on the interior, but there's not really value there. Their D-line's outstanding. I've, I've seen people say they need linebacker, which is a little bit weird. I think Holcomb's serviceable, solid, and you got Jamin Davis. But the Devin Lloyd's available. But I just think at this point, let's go corner. Let's bring in Kyrie Elam. And let's hope that we can develop him into a lockdown corner. Because that's the kind of ceiling that he has. 21, we have the Cincinnati Bengals. And I'm going to have the Bengals get Charles Cross. Tackle from Mississippi State. Kind of like the Dolphins here. It's just like, yeah, go best lineman available. Uh, Charles Cross was first team all SEC this year from PFF. Outstanding athlete and very strong pass blocker. Which is all the things that like you're looking for as a Bengal fan. Uh, obviously, it's a hot debate selecting, you know, uh, Jamar Chase over Sewell. And I think they're not, they're they're fine. I mean, Sewell's been outstanding for the Detroit Lions as well. Wouldn't have been a bad pick either way. But I think with the, you know, the kind of rookie year Jamar Chase is having, you're not going to find too many Bengal fans that are living in regret. And this, this year, there you go, get your tackle. I don't think, obviously, Charles Cross, not in the same tier as Sewell, but he's a lot better than the tackles that they have currently on the roster. And, you know, and that's, and that's still saying, like, Jonah Williams, serviceable. Uh, 22, we have the Chargers, and I'm going to have the Chargers get big ol' Jordan Davis. Need a nose tackle. Need someone that can come help stop the run. Jordan Davis, I mean, for the most part of college football season, they're like, he's going to be a Heisman contender. Now, there is a big issue with Jordan Davis. He is a gigantic man. I mean, 25 tackles, 3.5 TFLs, 2 sacks. But he's the best run defender in the class, easily. And I think that's exactly what the Chargers need on their defensive line, especially if you pair that with Joey Bosa. And, you know, really, Chenna Wosu, like, they, they get pressures, right? But it's the knock against Jordan Davis, which is, I think he's going to have him fall, because some people have him going top 10. He just doesn't stay on the field. He gets gassed. You get two plays out of this guy, and he's running off. Now, how much value does that have into a first round player? Uh, you know, you got to make that decision. But I think ultimately, 22, not a bad spot to get one of the better nose tackles we've seen, especially if you can get him, like, he's 260. If you can get that guy down to two, th like, no, or sorry, 360, and if you can get that guy down to 320, 330, somewhere in that range, get you know up his sack, up his his snaps by 20 percent. I mean, yeah, there you go. That's 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 a solid value at 22 to get your run stuffer, get a guy that's elite in the run game. 23, we have the Buffalo Bills, and I'm gonna have the Bills get another playmaker here for Josh Allen, and that is Jahan Dotson out of Penn State. 91 catches, 1,200 yards, 12 touchdowns. He's an explosive playmaker with outstanding hands. And you kind of see the desperation for the Buffalo Bills by bringing in Emmanuel Sanders. Like, we need someone else that's not Stephon Diggs that can make plays on the outside. Because clearly, you know, you have Beasley, and who knows if they're going to stick with him with his science degree. But you, know, you still need that guy that's going to be your playmaker. Jahan Dotson, not a straight burner, like not 4-2 speed or anything like that. Quicker than fast, but st I mean, still, I wouldn't be shocked if he runs sub 4-5. Just a big-time playmaker to capitalize the cannon of an arm that they have in Josh Allen. I feel like if the Bills are picking at 23, it's because their offense still wasn't explosive enough. So go help them out right here with Jahan Dotson. 24, we have the Detroit Lions back on the clock. They started with Aiden Hutchinson. And here I'm going to have them go to the linebacking core and get Devin Lloyd out of Utah. Devin Lloyd, maybe the one of the most scary Stat lines in college this year, let us draft eligible. 107 tackles, 22 TFL, 7 sacks, and 4 picks for Devin Lloyd out of Utah. We'll be under to see how well he you know, kind of runs at the combine. 6'3", 235. And, and again, this could be a pick for where I took um, 
the first linebacker to Kobe Dean, I mean, you know, it's one of those things. If Devin Lloyd runs 4-4 or something like that, Philly could very well grab him. And then you could swap the Kobe Dean with Devin Lloyd. But I think when you are the Detroit Lions, there's a guy right there that's going to be able to be the leader, the anchor, the play caller on your defense for the next you know five years minimum. And that is exactly what the Lions need to do. If you're going to if you're going to commit to this rebuild and you're not going to you know, fund a quarterback that can replace Jared Goff, let's just commit to the defense and making the defense a whole lot better. 25, we have the Dallas Cowboys, and I'm going to have them go into the secondary and grab with a guy that I think will be the first safety taken off the board, Dax Hill from Michigan. Uh, 65 tackles, 4.5 TFLs, 2 sacks, 7 pass breakups, very good ath- athlete, aggressive safety, can play in the slot, can play man coverage. I think that's exactly the kind of upgrade that the Cowboys need in the secondary. You had the ball hawk ability of Trevon Diggs. Other than that, the rest of the units kind of hit or miss. You know, you're getting some good play out of J. Ron Curse. Will that be able to be maintained? Is that the new level that he's going to play under Dan Quinn, or is he kind of just flashing a pan? I think even with that, someone like Daxon Hill, his versatility in that secondary is unmatched and would be a big-time player to help out the Dallas Cowboys. And I think that's kind of what they need. I think safety at 25 would be good positional value in terms of need for the Cowboys as well. 26, we have the Kansas City Chiefs, and I'm going to have the Chiefs get themselves a pass rusher and get Drake Jackson out of USC. 35, uh, 37 tackles, 8 TFLs, 5 sacks before he got hurt this year. High level pass rusher with a very high ceiling. Has some good pass rush moves. Maybe a little bit one dimensional for his pass rush, but I think ultimately it's very high ceiling, and he's only going to get those moves um, developed the more that he plays. You know, and I think like. You look at the Chiefs, just de- the defense is where they got to go, right? You watch the Chiefs play. Sure, there's some issues with Mahomes and stuff like that on the offense, but I feel like, well, it does slightly feel like maybe the defense is turning a little bit. They're finally starting to get their feet under them. Like, their pass rush is very expensive and underwhelming. It is time to kind of retool that pass rush, get cheaper, get more production out of that pass rush, and they do so by selecting Drake Jackson at 26. I mean, the other spot, I mean, you probably screen for wide receiver, Olave, you know, some of these guys, eh, you know, wouldn't be bad picks by any means, but I think the value right now is grabbing an edge rusher. Then see in the second round, maybe there's a wide oak going to be there. 27 for the Baltimore Ravens. This is a pick that I've been kind of loving for them, and that's Trevor Penning. Get this small school player out of Northern Iowa. Uh, he is uh, number 69 on the Feldman's Freak list. You're getting a guy that's 6'7, 320 pounds, and he's going to test very well. Very good athlete. Dominant left tackle. You can put him at right tackle. Obviously, you could have Ronnie Stanley at left tackle. Uh, Pro-ready frame, and he's an outstanding run blocker. So I just feel like, again, I tell you, anytime you get an offensive lineman, a tackle nonetheless, that has plus-plus grades in run blocking, it's going to fit in very well with the Baltimore Ravens. Be an upgrade immediately over Alejandro Villanueva. And, uh, yeah, that's and that's a typical Raven pick. Get a guy from a school no one's ever heard of, and he ends up playing like a pro bowler sooner than later. 28, we have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and here's where they're just laughing. They're like, oh, really? He fell to us? They're going to get to Marvin Leal, who's a perfect scheme fit. I think you can put him at defensive end on that line. I think pretty much all the spots on the front three of the Tampa Bay Bucs could be replaced sooner than later. They're very old, and they're still playing at a high level, but I think like that's where, if I'm the Bucs, that's where I want to improve. You look at DeMarvin Leal here, 58 tackles, 12 TFLs, 8.5 sacks, very high upside, and already a great run defender. Does a lot of the dirty things that some of the flashier pass rushers don't do, and I think there's an upside there. I mean, this is a free fall, depending on where you have him as your projected ranking. Some guys have him going in the top 10. Uh, does seem like there's some knocks against him, which, you know, I'm not really sure, really up on them. But it seems like a lot of dudes that do cover the draft are thinking that Leal could potentially slip here a little bit. Which, I mean, maybe it's scheme fit. Maybe not a lot of people are looking for 3-4 uh, you know, defensive ends. But I think the Bucs are laughing if Leal falls to them here at 28. 29, we have the Tennessee Titans. And I'm going, again, they're still chasing the legit replacement for uh, Isaiah Wilson. And I'm going to have them here select Bernard Raymond. I think he's going to be one of the bigger risers from the Combine. Uh, much like you see some of these guys we're talking about for the freaks list, you look at Raymond, he is number 26 on the freaks list, converted tight end, who is going to absolutely crush pretty much all the keys, 6'7", six, 6'8", six, somewhere in that range, and he's going to be one of the best, like I think him and Evan Neal are almost going to be locks for top three of like, just god damn it, these guys are monsters from the lineman group come the combine. Uh, 94 PFF grade, high ceiling tackle, and I think you're getting a guy that's a perfect run blocker 
for that Tennessee Titans offense. Plug and play at, at right tackle. Could eventually be the successor for Taylor Luan at left tackle. But I think tackle should be the position of need, the position that the Titans value the most at pick 29. Because, I mean, take your shot. They like NPF here at Ohio State. Sure, go for that one. They want to gamble on Falele and maybe get the next Jordan Mailata. Sure, go for that one. I think Canard is more so going to be a guard in the NFL, but I, I think you can't go wrong on the offensive line for the Tennessee Titans at 29. 30, we have the Green Bay Packers. And for the Green Bay Packers, they are going to get some wide receiver help. It looks like they're probably going to be losing Devontae Adams. So I'm going to have them get Chris Alave from Ohio State. 65 catches, 930 yards, 13 touchdowns for the Buckeyes this year. Great runner, good speed and tracking to go deep. Now, not S-tier speed, but I, I think he could go sub 4-4. And that's exactly, you know, the kind of playmakers that you're going to need for Jordan Love. Maximize Jordan Love's arm, maximize that cannon, and get a little bit more reliable of a catcher than, say, someone like MVS, who is great speed but not consistent catching. And I think it's about time that the Packers invest heavily on a big-time wide receiver, especially as they transition this offense out of most likely Devontae Adams and Aaron Rodgers. 31 for the New England Patriots. We are going to the secondary. I'm going to have them select Roger McCreary, corner from Auburn. Now, there's some debate whether or not McCreary can play on the outside. I think six feet tall, kind of short arms, but I, I, I would still probably start him out on the outside and showing how they use J.C. Jackson, where J.C. Jackson, by any means, is not 6'1". They still will throw him on the outside. I, I think someone like McCreary, great fit for that secondary for the Patriots. 49 tackles, two interceptions, 14 PBUs, excellent year. Excellent man cover skills, dominating the SEC. I think in terms of production, the most impressive SEC corner, and that is including Derek Stingley this year. And I think that if you're the Patriots going to get a little bit younger in that secondary, Roger McCreary is a great pick. I think Belichick's going to fall in love with him. I think the skill set, the way he plays, is going to be a Patriot-type player. And then to finish out the first round at 32 for the Arizona Cardinals, we are going to select... Trevon Walker from Georgia, 28 tackles, 5.5 TFLs, 4 sacks, high ceiling, 3-4 defensive end, can come in, learn behind J.J. Watt, and a lot of, there's some people in this scouting, I think the, uh, Dane Brugler's exact words were, he might be the best player on a Georgia defense, which, okay, I'm personally not going to go that far, but when you have people that are respecting the scouting community saying, this could be the guy, and you're getting this historic Georgia defense, and you're getting a guy that, that's at least in the conversation of like, he might be the best player, you're getting that at pick 32, and he's a scheme fit, doesn't get a whole lot better than that for the Arizona Cardinals. So now we are moving into the second round, starting with the Detroit Lions. Let's go through it. We're going to set a better pace here, be a little bit quicker. So I picked 33 for the Detroit Lions. I'm going to have them get Drake London, wide receiver from USC. Probably would be a lock for the first round. Does have an injury. No one's exactly sure like when he's going to be able to join the offseason workouts and stuff like that. But Drake London played, I think, eight games 88 catches, 1,000 yards, and 7 touchdowns. Elite jump ball wide receiver was number 60 on Bruce Feldman's freak list. I, I just think, you know, you look, now is the time. You're not going to get a quarterback? Sure, fine, whatever. Get a wide receiver. The Lions still need a wide receiver one. You pair him with his teammate at Amon Ross St. Brown, you got something there. You're building Cephas Hive. You're slowly starting, you know, obviously you already have a great tight end at TJ Hawkinson. So you slowly start that build offense up so you're a quarterback away. London, that's good value there. We have at 34, the Houston Texans. And I'm going to have them. I feel like right now, why not? That's not a bad time to grab Malik Willis. Again, it's still not a crazy investment if he doesn't develop. But, I mean, you're the Texans. A quarterback. You're not necessarily a quarterback win right now type situation. So you can get Malik Willis and be patient with him. You know, I think we saw enough out of uh, Davis Mills that's like, all right, that was not a great pick. Take the mulligan on that one. Get Malik Willis. Get a guy with high upside. Get a guy that could stylistically potentially get – you know, in the area code of what Deshaun Watson was bringing to your offense. I, I, I don't think, I think second rounds, are, you know, that's that's the good spot to grab someone like Malik Willis and, and get a, you know, why did you hire Cully? Did you bring him because he's worked with scrambling quarterbacks? If so, he go. They go. 35 for the Jacksonville Jaguars. I'm going to have them go grab a wide receiver. I think their offense is very much lacking. So I'm going to have them get David Bell. Out of Purdue, 93 catches, 1,300 yards, six touchdowns. Um, combine will be interesting. He's one of those guys that like can't get a true read on how good of an athlete he is. Could be surprising, but he catches everything. Like he has one of the best sets of hands, one of the more reliable. Like kind of reminds me a certain degree of Rashad Bateman last year, where it's like okay, he's like he does a lot of things very well. Maybe not elite in any certain thing, but he is absolutely a guy that's going to be like immediately like if he goes, he's going to be wide receiver two as a rookie for the Jacks. 
You know, obviously, hopefully, a healthy DJ Chark can continue to develop. But you need to you need to surround Trevor Lawrence with some freaking weapons here. And for whatever reason, you're reluctant. You know, Urban Meyer is reluctant to use James Robinson. Hopefully, they trade him. You're gonna get ETN back, and you throw out someone like David Bell at wide receiver. As you can tell, coming with a cold. Love it. Yes, have kids. They said you just get sick all the time. All right, moving on. We have the Jets at pick 36, and I'm gonna have them get the best tight end in the class, Jalen. Weidermeyer from Texas A&M, 40 catches, 500 yards, four touchdowns. Probably, you can always argue at this point, especially for the top tight ends, he's the most well-rounded, and he has upside to be a potential top 10 tight end in the NFL. Uh, and that's, you know, I'm not saying he's going to be like, you know, top 10, and he's not one through seven. But I, I think there is a very good ceiling there. A little bit of a down year. He was better last year at A&M. I think it was just a different offense. Had some quarterback issues. But he's, he's a really sound tight end. Get that safety net. Get, again, another player that can contribute to the blocking to help out Mr. Zach Wilson. But Zach Wilson, what did he also have at BYU? Very good tight end play between Matt Bushman and Isaac Rex. Don't have that. Don't have that safety net. You get your safety net right here. 37, the Bears finally get to pick. And I'm going to have them improve the offensive line. Jason Peters, let's be honest, you can do better. You can do better, especially if Justin Fields is your quarterback. So we're going to have him get one of Justin Fields' Big time pass blockers. Nicholas Petit Friere. Uh, I, I think he's. I, I think you ultimately go with him at left tackle, and then you kick Kevin Jenkins over to right tackle. But hey, you need to improve that offensive line if you're going to give Justin Fields a chance to develop. Looks like he's running for his life every single play. So here we go. You get NPF, good athlete, high upside for a tackle. 38, we have the Giants, and I'm going to have the Giants continue to improve the offensive line, and they're going to get Zion Johnson, guard from Boston College. He is number 77 on the Freaks list. Very good athlete, second team PFF ACC. Powerful run blocker, has some versatility, has played tackle as well, but I think you're more so going to push him in there to one of the guard spots. I think for this draft, for the Giants, it is about, you know, seems like most fans, most are sticking with Daniel Jones. If you're sticking with Daniel Jones for one more year because of the weak QB class or whatever, or you're going to maybe package those first-round picks to get a Russell Wilson or something stupid like that, some trade, got to fix it. That O-line just, I feel so bad. Anytime I see the Giants play, I just feel so bad for Saquon Barkley. I was like, what is he supposed to do? So let's, you get you get Linderbaum in the first round. You get Zion Johnson in the second round. You got, you know, Will Hernandez is serviceable. Hopefully Andrew Thomas keeps getting better, progressing, even if it's slowly but surely. And you, you start to form a competent offensive line. If you don't have a competent offensive line, especially in the NFC East, you ain't, you get, you know, with the Eagles, which, I mean, they don't get a lot of sacks, but they got some dogs up there on the off defensive line. You have the defensive line of the, the football team, which is one of the best in college. You now have Michael freaking Parsons for the Dallas Cowboys. That's awesome to go up against. You need to have a good O-line, and I think this is the draft for the Giants to finally build one. 39, we have the Seattle Seahawks, and I'm going to have the Seahawks go over here. Grab himself an edge rusher. I think it's going to be a riser. And that's Jermaine Johnson. Last chance you. Went to Georgia, was good. Transferred to Florida State and was outstanding. Took his game to another level. 70 tackles, 17 and a half TFLs, 11 and a half sacks. He's a prototype. 6'5", 260 pounds. Gives me flashes of Jalen Phillips a little bit. It won't be the athlete that Jalen Phillips was, which really is what propelled Jalen Phillips from second round with some injury concerns to a first rounder last year. But I still think he's a damn good player. Uh, big, aggressive, really good motor. And I think that when you look at the Seattle Seahawks, they need that pass rusher. And they need that guy that's not going to be Dunlap where he's kind of at the end there. You need that young upside. They've tried getting it. They're not Daryl Taylor has looked kind of good in flashes. You know, you didn't really get that the TCU guy. Like, ugh. They're looking. They've been searching. They've been thrown at a dartboard trying to get that pass rusher that's going to take over from Bennett. Get that double-digit guy. So you want a double-digit guy out of all the players that are available – Jermaine Johnson has as much of a chance as an Ebikiti, as a Zach Harrison, as a Maja Sanders. 40 for the Jets. I'm going to have the Jets continue to improve the secondary. And this is another player I think I think there's a log jam now. I, I, I don't know, Brandon Joseph, he's going to declare or not. But between Scene, Battle, and Brisker, take your pick. And I'm going to go with Scene. I think he's a little bit more of a strong safety. So I'm going to, you know, bigger, more of a hitter, 61 tackles, a pick, eight PBUs, great size in a run defender. And I think more so there's there's that contract that's, you know, we have Ashton Davis, cover guy. Marcus May, haven't paid him yet. So if you're not going to pay Marcus May, you need someone that can fill that role. And I think Lewis Seen is absolutely the kind of playmaker, even though he made a dirty-ass hit against Kyle Pitts a couple years ago, which I'm still upset about. 
Uh, probably at this point for what they are looking for. Brisker, too similar to what they have in Ashton Davis. Jordan Battle, kind of kind of similar to what they have. I think Scene offers the better complement to what they already have, and I think Ashton Davis is a nice young safety. So, and, and because I think it's really a log jam, Scene here, big-time run defender, can help that Jets defense set the tone physically and help them more so as a run defender, but also not a liability when it comes to dropping back into coverage. 41, we have the Minnesota Vikings. They got Booth. They grab corner. And here, I'm going to have them keep improving the defense. And they are going to get a Nogberry from South Carolina. Uh, I think when you look at him, 43 tackles, 7 TFLs, 9 and a half sacks for a Nogberry. Uh, Pro-ready pass rusher. Maybe not the highest ceiling out of everyone. But I think when you look there, you got to get, you know, got to get some consistent play on the other side of um, Didiel Hunter. And DJ Wanham, I like him. Uh, is he a starter? Or is he a guy that's going to be most productive as a rotational guy? Which is fine, especially early on. So you get uh, Ignabry and you have him come in, be a little bit of rotation with Wanham on the other side of Hunter. That's a healthy rotation for the Minnesota Vikings to become, once again, a dominant defense. Man, it's, it's weird when the Vikings don't have a great defense. And this draft is going to try to, between an edge rusher and a corner, to get them back to where they need to be. 42, we have the New Orleans Saints. And I'm going to, they got a quarterback, and I'm going to have them grab another wide receiver and get George Pickens. From Georgia, injured this year. He only had three catches, 46 yards. But when healthy, man, he is our first rounder. Has a little prima donna to him, but all the good wide receivers tend to have that. And I think that if he was healthy, if he didn't tear his ACL and he came back for Georgia, made it, made a play or two, really big catch against Alabama in the SEC championship game. But if he was playing this year full season, he's a first rounder. Separation and jump ball skills are very, very good. You know, he's 6'3", 6 6'4", 6 kind of lanky. I don't know how fast he's going to be. You know, probably 4'5", low 4'5s. I don't think he's 4'4". But when you look at the wide receiver, I mean, you can't be relying on Callaway. You can't be relying on Deontay Harris or whatever, the return guy. Got to get some playmakers here. It's not just going to be Michael Thomas coming back. And I think someone like Pickens gives you that upgrade over a Trey Con, like literally anyone that's not named Michael Thomas when they're healthy down there. And that is exactly what you need to throw to provide with Matt Corral to help him out as a rookie. 43, the Atlanta Falcons back on the clock, and I'm going to have them, they switch to that 3-4, so they're going to continue to you know build their defense in that 3-4 set, and I'm going to have them get Isaiah Foskey from Notre Dame. Uh, Foskey this year, 47 tackles, 8.5 TFLs, 9 sacks, fits the new schemes, a strong run defender with uh, you know, a developing pass rush. I feel like at this point for 3-4 guys, maybe Benito could play in that 3-4 as well, coming off the edge, but I think right now Foskey... Uh, good athlete. I think he has uh, the number 45 spot on the Bruce Feldman Freaks list. So from that standpoint, yes, sir. Help you out with that. Get more upside. And I think this is a nice little piece for a Falcons defense that is still working their way from a 4-3 to a 3-4. Philly's back on the clock at 44, and they are going to go to the safety spot. Tough. You know, I think either one of these guys I'd be happy with. But right now I'm going to go Jaquan Brisker. He is number 76 on the Freaks list, so he's down there a little bit, but still a very good athlete. 63 tackles, 6 TFLs, 2 picks, 5 pass breakups, runs a 4-3 reportedly. Good cover skills, had an 89 PFF cover score. Philly needs a safety. We cannot, you know, I would be happy if we trade two of those first-round picks to go up and get Kyle Hamilton. But either way, need a safety. We do not have great safety play. Roddy McLeod's solid, but showing his age a little bit, not the same type of player. And, you know, Anthony Harris won your deal. Marcus Epps is playing way too much. Got to grab a safety before we're done the, you know, day, first, second round, somewhere in that range. I'd be very happy with Brisker, man. Very good. You could almost argue he's the best defensive player on Penn State this year. Getting that at 44, nice value. Kind of reminds me of a former Penn State safety in Adrian Amos, who was pretty damn good in today's NFL. 45, we have the Miami Dolphins. And I'm going to have the Dolphins get themselves a starting running back. And they're going to get Kenneth Walker III from Michigan State. Heisman contender, 1,700 yards, 19 total touchdowns. Tough volume runner with RB1 potential. I think for the Dolphins, again, as they continue to improve that offensive line, they need that rushing tack, that consistent. You know, and you know, Miles Gass, and you're not really getting that from him. Get that consistent rushing attack that can complement to a tag of Iloa, and I think you can get that with Kenneth Walker. I mean, by all reports, they were trying to get Javante Williams last year. So I think that, that's the style that they're thinking about investing a second-round pick in. Kenneth Walker is your guy this year. 46, we have the Raiders. I'm going to have the Raiders do Raiders thing here. And they got Leatherwood. Thought he might be in tackle. Ended up kicking him to guard. Seems like a solid guard. So why not try to get the next Jordan Mailata? Why not? Need that big time tackle. You liked the size profile of Trent Brown. Didn't work out. 
So let's get full ALA. Six foot nine, 400 pounds. He is literally the exact same size as Jordan Mailata. Very good at Like, he literally is like, if there's someone that is comparable to Jordan Mailata, it's almost a like for like. And there's like less learning of football. So I, I think that someone is going to get Falele in the second round. Why not? That, that's a Raiders pick. That's a Mike Mayock selection. You know? And I, I don't think that'd be a bad pick. Very might not be a Pro Bowler right away. Get have some, you know, ups and downs like Philly we had here in Philly with Jordan Mailata. But eventually, if he can put it all together, there's just some you can't teach six foot nine, four hundred pounds with the footwork and speed and athleticism that he has. Someone's going to take a gamble. And hey, they developed Colton Miller. They took Colton Miller from like, hey, he's a good tall athlete into a very serviceable to good starting left tackle. Why not you know, find that same success with Filet LA? 47, Cleveland Browns. I'm going to have the Browns grab an edge rusher here. And they're going to get Zach Harrison from Ohio State. Upside type player. Um, 28 tackles, 7 ta TFLs, 3 sacks, 6'6", 265, with reports that he's going to be able to sniff maybe the 4'5", low 4'6", range, which is outstanding. You only have Jadavid on Clowney for one year. You're going to be able to resign him, maybe. But I'm not still need that long-term partner on the other side of Miles Garrett and staying in-state with Ohio State, getting a high upside pass rusher like Zach Harrison. Yeah, that, that's, that's a nice little gamble there for the Cleveland Browns. 48 to the Denver Broncos. I'm going to have them grab themselves a quarterback, Carson Strong. You know, even though he's not pulling the strings there, John Elway would be like, yeah, let's get this kid. Six foot five, can of an iron fits the exact profile that they want. And I and I don't think he's going to be another Drew Locke. I think he's a little bit more better processing, a little bit more better. Great English, but better processor. Uh, throws with anticipation. The exact things that you don't get with Drew Locke outside of Drew Locke's arm. And I, I think that's great value, man. And, you know, this is done, obviously, because we don't know. And I don't want to just kind of, you know, hold Aaron Rodgers to the to the Broncos hostage as to how I handle this draft for them. And if they can get Carson Strong in the second round, they might have to trade up, trade up to the top end. I don't know. I, I personally don't have a first-round grade on Carson Strong now. But he's fringe. I have him, like, second-round, fringe, first-rounder. But that, that's a good fit for the Denver Broncos. I think most Broncos fans would be happy right now because Teddy's not it, man. Teddy is simply not it. Moving on to the Colts. I'm going to have the Colts get themselves an addresser. Majay Sanders from Cincinnati. Uh, 34 tackles, 7.5 TFLs, 2.5 sacks, upside defensive end. And trust me, if you watch Cincinnati play, he's a lot better than the box score. A little bit more productive last season, but he's a guy that makes everyone else on the defensive line better. And he's one of those guys that's like, get him on an NFL strength and conditioning program. Once this guy fills into his frame, high upside. And you don't want to hear that because the Colts have kind of got high upside guys. Hasn't worked out. Ture, um, oh, who's that other guy? They got Kamoko Ture and... Uh, Oh, I can't remember. They have another guy. Oh. It's on the tip of my tongue. But either way, they've gambled on edge rushers, kind of high investments in the past, and they haven't been able to develop them. And I think maybe there's a risk there, but they need to get more sacks. they got to get more penetration from up front. It can't all fall onto Forrest Buckner. And I think Sanders in the second round, like there's something there. There's value there for an edge rusher that could be a double-digit guy with all said and done. Before the end of his rookie contract. Pick 50, we have the Steelers, and I'm going to have the Steelers improve the offensive line here, and they're going to get Darian Kennard. Could view him as a right tackle, could slide him in the guard. Either way, the Steelers' offensive line is so bad that he is going to be a guy that's going to come in and be a day one starter. Between tackle or guard, that's all i got to say about it. He's a really strong run blocker. Um, I think he was first team SEC by PFF. So you get that versatility, strong run blocker. That's exactly what the Steelers want and need. Pick 51, we have football team, and again, kind of like... Selection here for the Broncos. I'm going to have them get Desmond Ritter. I mean, at this spot, it's not that massive first-round commitment to a quarterback. Ritter's good dual threat. You know, he's number 56 on the freaks list. And I will go back just to defend. Myjay Sanders, number 20 on the freaks list. Daniel Falele, number 29 on the freaks list. But with Desmond Ritter, you're getting a dual threat quarterback. Guy that has big game experience. Definitely offers a little bit more than what you get with Taylor Heineke. I think he has good arm. Uh, 3,200 yards, passing 30 touchdowns to 8 picks, as well as 360 rushing yards, 6 rushing uh, touchdowns. Needs to get better accuracy, needs to get more consistent, but with what you have at Heineke, you don't have to rush Desmond Ritter. He can be that guy that sits a little bit, you develop him, and you don't throw him into the Wolves till 2023, and that is fine for a second round investment. Gives you a good look at a quarterback, gives you a, most likely an upgrade at quarterback, and you're not drafting one in the first round and overpaying for one. Pick 52, we have the 49ers, and I'm going to have them here. Grab Trent McDuffie, 
corner from Washington. Most likely he's going to be a slot, but you know you could kind of be a little bit of the J.C. Jackson approach. Have him play on the outside a little bit because he is, what, 5'11", maybe 5'10", 190 pounds. 35 tackles, 4 TFL, 6 PBUs, limited production, but no one targets him. He's not going to be a big box score guy because they just don't throw his way. He shuts that shit down. And I think most people have him as a lock to go fringe first round. A little bit of a fall here. Number 40 on the freaks list, so he should test out very well. I've heard he has like plus 40 vert, which kind of helps compensate a little bit for the lack of size, lack of length. And I think for the Niners, really just kind of need to keep fueling and adding to that secondary. It's not really that great right now. Uh, 53. We have the Chargers, and I'm going to have them continue to improve the offensive line to get Jackson Kirkland. Uh, let's be honest, Brian Bulaga just kind of can't stay healthy at this point in time. But you hit on a tackle last year, Rashawn Slater. Let's get your right tackle in Jackson Kirkland to help with that run game and to continue to protect Justin Herbert. Huge tackle for Kirkland. 6'7", prototype size. After some versatility, he's played some guard as well. So there's just a little bit more value there for pick 53. 54, we have the Bengals. And I'm going to have them go to the secondary and get Darion Kendrick. Converted wide receiver at Clemson. Made the transition to corner. So he's still learning the position. Transferred to Georgia. 33 tackles, 2 picks, 3 pass breakups. But a very good a very good athlete. Guy that can run right now on the outside. Um... I mean, you know, you. I almost think I would almost equate it to like athletic William Jackson, very similar type athlete as what they had in William Jackson. You have Hilton, who's solid in the slot. You have Chidobe Wujie, which I thought was great business bringing him over from the Cowboys. Still need that other corner, and I feel like Kendrick can be that guy that develops into a starter for you guys down the road. Pick fifty-five. We have the Buffalo Bills. This is the only pick that I don't really like for my whole mock draft that I that I made, but I'm sticking with it, and I'm going to have them get Arnold Ebiketti from. Penn State, formerly of Temple. He has 64 tackles, 18 TFLs, 9 half sacks. The way you look at it, they're still not getting sacks. Between Greg Rousseau, between they got veterans there, Jerry Hughes, Addison. You got Boogie Basson, probably more going to be used as a D-tackle, but he's listed as a defensive end. A.J. Epineza, they, they have, they've invested as a pass rush, and they're not getting any pass rush production on these guys. So I think, you know, this argument is like, once again, let's go back to the, the drawing board. Let's get somebody... That can line up. You can put him at linebacker as well. Outside linebacker, you can put him down the line. They need to find sacks. And until they find one, you're going to keep searching that chase. I mean, they could look at corner depth here. Look at the guys that are available. Maybe Kyler Gordon, Emerson, sure. But I'm just looking at that defense, and the thing that stands up to me is like they're still not getting sacks. So that's kind of why. That's how I at least justify going edge rusher yet again here for the Bills at 55. 56, we have the Broncos back on the clock, and I'm going to have the Denver Broncos select. Christian Harris, middle linebacker from Alabama. He is number 27 on the freaks list this year for Alabama. 64 tackles, 5.5 TFLs, 3 PBUs. Good athlete, great instincts. Regressed a little bit in terms of his pass coverage. That's that's kind of been consistent for a lot of the scouts right here. But I think when you are looking for someone else to can come in, play with Baron Browning for the middle of this linebacking core going forward for the next 4-5 years, can do a lot worse than Christian Harris in the second round. He's a guy that for a long time was considered being mocked in that first round. We have the Chiefs up at pick 57, and I'm going to have them grab a wide receiver, and they're going to get Justin Ross from Clemson. I think this is the perfect team to draft Justin Ross. Justin Ross, 47 catches, 500 yards, three touchdowns on a pretty horrible Clemson team. Had some injuries. The medicals are going to be important. But, I mean, I think this is a great gamble for the Chiefs. They need a big-time playmaker on wide receiver. You're seeing their desperation by bringing in Josh Gordon and stuff like that. But I think when you look at this, I mean, his first two years at Clemson, this guy was a bona fide first-round pick. Lock for the first round. So as long as his medicals pass, he might slip a little bit because there's still questions about his health. Production wasn't quite there, but this is a first round talent wide receiver. And that's the, that, that's how the Chiefs draft. Like they got Creed Humphrey in the second round last year. Disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. They've been that team that's been able to benefit from having a strong roster that they can kind of get the guys that slip. They don't have to reach for anyone. And Justin Ross kind of fits the way the Chiefs have been drafting the last couple years. 58, we have the Baltimore Ravens, and I'm going to have the Ravens improve their defensive line and get Fedarian Mathis from Alabama. 41 tackles, 7.5 TFL, 7 sacks, quick interior rusher. Going to be able to play all over that front for the Ravens. 320 pounds, could have him take a little bit of reps inside, but ultimately I think he's he's the Clayus Campbell replacement. He's a guy that, you know, throw him in there rotationally. Him and Matt Abuke long-term, that could be their pairing, but I, I think just getting some more pass rush help on the inside and getting a little bit younger is a nice little pick there for the Baltimore Ravens. 
59, we have the Dallas Cowboys, and I'm going to have them go into the secondary and select Martin Emerson from Mississippi State. We have 49 tackles, 3 TFLs, 3 BUs, rangy outside corner, lockdown potential, and I think going forward, you're looking at big picture. Where is this Cowboys secondary going to be two, three years? Obviously, you have Trevon Diggs. You hope Kelvin Joseph can maybe be your slot guy. Got to get another player on the outside. I think you get that maybe in Martin Emerson, 6'2", long, rangy guy. So that they, you know, I just think we're going to go all in and continue to address the secondary here for Dallas. Much improved under Dan Quinn. And while they are, like, it's kind of a secondary, though, that, like, they're not shutting guys down. They're getting, they're relying on the turnovers. And the turnovers aren't, like, and let's be honest, it's probably not going to be sustainable to have, you know, nine picks or whatever the hell Trayvon Diggs has. So you're going to have to eventually address the issue and be like, we're not going to be a boomer bust secondary. We're going to be a great secondary, well-rounded secondary. You do that by getting a Dax Hill in the first round and a Martin Emerson in the second round to pair with Kelvin Joseph and Trevon Diggs going forward. Because Anthony Brown, Jordan Lewis, you can upgrade from those guys. We have the Bucks up at pick 60. And we're going to have the Bucks go over here on the D-line and get Logan Hall from Houston. It just much like the first pick, I want them to just get keep, you know, redoing, remodeling that front three. And Logan Hall, very much. Number 54 on the Freaks list, 47 tackles, 13 TFLs, 6 sacks for Houston. Great size and versatility, 6'6", 280. Again, just much like, who did I have them get in the first round? They had them getting uh, DeMarvin Leal. Logan Hall play on the other side. You know, just your successors for Golson, Dominic and Sue. Yeah, that's all I got for you. Just I, I think that would be my approach if I was the Bucks this year. Just reload that front three. Falcons back on the clock at 61. And I'm going to them get actually another defensive line. They're getting Defonte Wyatt from Georgia. Number five on the Freaks list. 34 tackles, 7 TFLs, 2.5 sacks. Excellent burst, 89 PFF grade. And I think he's going to transition to a 3-4 defensive end because you want to maximize his athletic potential. And for a team that is transitioning to a 3-4, I mean, he's a guy that could rise a little bit, especially if he's number five on the Freaks list. Could really, really help his stock out at the Combine. But I think for the Falcons, as you continue to go to that 3-4, like that's where I would go. You got Traylon Burks. Now every other pick for Atlanta, let's kind of work and address that defense. 62, we have the Green Bay Packers. I'm going to have them grab Brandon Smith, linebacker from Penn State. Uh, he's number 32 on the Freaks list. 81 tackles, 9 TFLs, 5 PBUs, elite athlete, great cover linebacker at 6'3", 240. And I feel like you pair that with the fact, you know, you, you got some good production from Devon J. Campbell. Are you going to resign him? Because he's only on a one-year deal. You think he's a flash of the pan. You think you can get that production elsewhere. You have Chris Barnes, who's solid developing, but you, you don't have an athlete like Brandon Smith. For that linebacker control, for that linebacker core, I think you get that and you throw that there at second round, bottom of the second round, just an athlete like that. You think of Micah Parsons level athleticism at that linebacker spot. You think Odafe Owe or Jay, well, yeah, that's what they call him now. Like Brandon Smith's that other linebacker that was like kind of a part of that triplet. Getting that in the second round, let's see what the kid can do. Uh, Patriots at the 63rd pick, second to last. I'm gonna have them get Jordan Battle, safety from Alabama. 69 tackles, 3 picks. He has no real weakness. Combine will be important to see the kind of athlete he is. But again, for the Patriots, got to get younger in that safety spot. you got to find someone else that's going to be able to play with Kyle Duggar long term. And I think you get that in Jordan Battle. And doubling up, Jordan Battle, Roger McCree, two proven SEC defensive backs. That's, that's, that's a Patriot way. That's the Patriot way right there. And we finish out the mock draft. 32, Arizona Cardinals. And I'm going to have them select Kyler Gordon, corner from Washington. Six foot two, 200 pounds, 45 tackles, two picks, seven PBUs, 89 PFF coverage grade, and number 39 on the Bruce Feldman freaks list, 42 inch vertical. Pretty good, pretty crazy. Get another guy on the outside that can play. Isn't the other corner they have from Washington as well? I think he is, right? So there you go. I mean, I don't think the I don't think the Cardinals are with the Super Bowl, but I I know you go, man. Fun hour long, two hour mock draft, talking about calls for two hour long, an hour long, 58 minutes. Talking about college players. Uh, let me know what you guys think about it in the comments section below. Do you like my picks for your team? Where would you have gone differently? Uh, what picks do you love? What picks do you hate? Let me know in that comment section below. Thank you guys very much for watching. And until next time, it's C4 Saves. First time stopping by. Don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. I think my kids just working up, so it's perfect timing. And I'll see you guys back here tomorrow for a new Philadelphia Eagles episode. Thanks for watching, guys, and peace out.